This is the best job in the world. I'm going to be honest, this was a bit of a random inspiration that I just wanted to produce a track like this and I thought, well, you know, I'll share that random process, so I hope you find it useful. We go into every stage of creating this modern drum and bass track, including the drums, the gnarly distorted bass line, some old school breaks and piano, arrangement, mixing, and a bunch of other stuff besides. As usual, you can download this project file, all the samples completely free below this video. If you want coaching with me, you can check out my accelerator program below this video, where we've helped our students get signed to some of the world's biggest dance music labels. Okay, without further ado, let's hop into the door and get it done. Boom, okay, let's do it. No edits, no cuts, got my cup of tea, let's get straight to it. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is set to 174 BPM, and then on my magic list, it says we should do the drums first. And I wanna create something that's really lush and big and modern sounding, uh, but the drums are gonna be the absolute foundation of the track. So I'm gonna to go to my favorites, Will's favorite kicks. Let's choose a nice big fat one like that. And we can slow the tempo down if we want help as to what the rhythm should be when it comes to kick, because a house track obviously has a kick on every beat like this on the 4-4. This is gonna be fast though. But we don't want that, so with drum and bass, it's gonna drop out. That's a very important part of that rhythm. So we're gonna go dun -tch, dun -tch. So like this. And then we'll start that loop again there. So we can just copy that. I'm gonna put in a couple of ghost kicks as well though. So just slightly quieter ones like that, just tweaking that velocity. Cool. And let's just bring that in. Next, we need a big fat snare. Now I've got a favorite snare that I like to use for drum and bass. That's one I created. So let's grab that. Nice and punchy. So we want something that's really gonna cut through that mix. So I'm just gonna drag it into the drum bus. You can see I've already got an EQ set up just in my default template. Really important to have default template set up. Really important to have favorites so you can work quickly. And then we just put a drum snare drum on every other beat, which is the same as in-house music. Nice, okay, let's save this. What are we gonna call this? Hmm, let's see. Well, if it's drum and bass, we are going to call this in your face, bass, ace. Okay, I'm gonna use Loop Cloud to get a shuffle on the go. You've got to get a shuffle on, you know, very important part of drum and bass. In fact, what we can do is if we just quit Loop Cloud, we can drag it in to a MIDI track and actually have it synchronized to our project, which is a really cool feature. So we can actually listen to, listen to loops and they're going to be in sync with our project. So I'm just going to open this up and I'm just going to search for a shuffle. Mm, let's call this Shaker. And we are going to go drum and bass, and we should now find some good loops, audio filters. Let's make them make sure that we've got loops and not single shots. So I'll make it a little bit longer to make sure we filter out those single shots. Let's have a listen. That sounds pretty good. Let's just listen to a couple, and we're listening out for the frequencies more than anything. It's going to work with the drums we've already got. That's cool. So I really like that one. Even though the rhythm isn't quite right, we're going to just move it around a bit. That's why we're listening for the timbre more than anything. Okay, so now we want just a standard shaker loop, which is on every 16th going shh, 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 like so. So all I'm going to do is just kind of butcher this a little bit and just so let's bring that one over there uh, yeah so now we've got that hitting on every 16th let's just copy and paste that duplicate it bring it down in tempo a little bit let's call it shaker keep things nice and organized green the natural color of drums in the wild and in the studio funnily enough learned that from David Attenborough and then let's just bring it in slowly underneath those drums. 
Cool. Now, next thing we want to do is set up our sidechain trigger so we can sidechain duck some of the other elements. That's going to be really important. But what we want to do, instead of having my standard 4-4 sidechain trigger, we want to make sure that is hitting the exact same places as the kick drum. So I'm just going to delete that, paste that one there, like so. Then we've got one there. Just delete that, paste that one there. Boom. And let's just consolidate that. I don't think I'll have one for the ghost kick. Cool. So let's consolidate that, duplicate it. And now we are going to duck this shaker very slightly using a sidechain compressor. So I'm going to compress and we want this sidechain trigger to duck this signal so that the kick can really pop through. So I'm just going to take the sidechain input from my sidechain trigger track, which is set to sends only. So we never actually hear what's playing, which is this. Just a little rim shot. But as I said, we'll just set this to sends only so we never actually hear it. But it is going to trigger this little thing. So let's just listen to it. Just going to add some movement to the track, like so. Nice. Okay, next thing we're going to do is add some cymbals to this because we want this really kind of punchy and in your face, this kind of drum and bass. So let's go and find some cymbal splashes. We'll save that one because we want a bit of an old school feel. So we want that classic cymbal sound. We'll use that a little bit later. But at the moment, I want more of a ride cymbal sound. In fact, I may as well go to ride cymbals, eh? Probably makes more sense. I quite like that real sound. So I'm going to bring that one in, but I'm going to make sure it's quite short. So I'll take the sustain down and the release down. So it's going to be quite a short, just a um, short drum sound. And let's program one in on every eighth, like so. That might be a bit short, but it's fine. We can kind of open it up a bit. And I'm going to preview a couple because I'm not sure if this is going to be the right timbre exactly. Now I'm going to try a couple of other ones. Maybe I will try a crash actually. It's all about how these frequencies work with each other. Ooh, disco. That's cool. I might just keep that. No, it's going to be too distracting. Yeah, we'll use this one. That's cool. Let's take out the low end. I can hear there's some low end in that. We want to keep our mix nice and clean. Cool. Okay, that's the main part of the beats, although I am going to bring in one extra shaker. I'm going to bring in a different one just to add more depth and texture. We're layering up. So this is simplicity on the other side of complexity. We're not having two different shakers playing different rhythms. They're just going to be, in effect, two layers of the same kind of sound or doing the same job. Um, so again, I could go into Loop Cloud, listen for some other shaker loops. Uh, let's have a listen. That one could be quite cool. Oh, that's cool. Is that different enough? It's kind of similar, but I really like that. I think it works really nicely. I'm going to grab that one too. Can I just pull it in there? So now we've got these two shakers. Cool. So, whoops, I'm going to call that shaker two, color it green, and then we're going to go on to the next thing.
as I say, I'm just kind of doing this for fun because I felt like it today. So, uh, right, next thing we need to do is get the bass on the go. This is such an important part of drum and bass, obviously. So, some of this might be a little in depth, but that's okay because you need to know it if you're going to create drum and bass. And you could, you know, in fact, I highly recommend getting just like a good preset pack for a synth like Serum. But I'm going to create this sound from scratch because I'm feeling ambitious and I might potentially embarrass myself, but let's see what happens with the sound. So I'm going to bring it down in tempo a little bit. And let's just start building it straight away. I want like a sub focusy type, nice bass, like a bit grungy, but nice and clean as well. Let's change it to mono because we don't want the bass notes bleeding into each other. Um, let's add another oscillator, maybe a triangle wave. So that's already sounding pretty cool. That's kind of cool. I like that riff. I might use that. But we want to make this a nice grungy sound. So first thing I'm going to do is kind of start shaping this with a filter. So let's use, we'll use envelope two to shape the filter because the first one is going to be the ADSR of the amplitude and we want it to be nice and instantly hitting at the moment. We might change it a bit soon. So let's just put both oscillators through to that filter and then have this open up like so. I'll change this to unipolar. So that's the kind of sound that we want to go for. Okay, now let's start making this really kind of fat and interesting. So I'm going to have a separate sub channel actually, so we'll leave that off for the time being. And now let's add some hyperdimension. Just going to be adding some timbre, a little bit of dimension, which is kind of like a room reverb, like really short and sharp, but it gives it this nice texture. Okay, distortion. This is going to be super important when we get to creating that drum and bass sound. So I'm going to choose diode one and now you can start hearing where we're getting to that drum and bass sound. So let's, uh, I don't know if I need to actually add this. Uh, it's not important to have the filter on yet, actually. But what is important is to use this envelope to adjust the drive. So we want it to kind of open up. So we could actually have it on the mix as well. So that's sounding pretty cool already. Okay, next thing that we are going to add is maybe some EQ. Actually, no, I don't think we need EQ yet, so let's kill that. We are going to add some sidechain compressor, uh, some multiband compressor though, OTT, just to spice it up a bit. And then one more thing that we might try to do is have this. Oh, I know what we can do to make this sound really cool, actually. Let's give it some more bite at the beginning. So what I'm going to do is have one more envelope. I'm going to make this quite short and sharp. And then we are going to apply this to the master tune. So we go envelope three and we are going to go to global master tune. And listen to what this is going to do. Ooh. But we want this to be really short and sharp. It's going to give it some extra kind of punch, like a kick drum. So listen to that difference now. This is without it. That's cool. Okay, so now we need to work out what key we're going to write this track in, uh, and then we can write in a bass line, but I like it there. So I'm going to just draw that bass line in, basically. 
and then I guess it's going to be in this key, but we'll work it out in a sec. And the length of the notes is really important as well. So the space in between them is equally important as the notes that are being hit to give everything a, a chance to breathe through the mix. Okay, so let's commit to this scale then. We're going to go G sharp, G sharp minor. And then if we hit scale, it's going to make writing this bass line really easy because we can never hit a wrong note if we're in scale mode. And this is like a syncopated rhythm. So you can see I'm skipping two sixteenths in between each note. And then we might have an A, B section, like a call and response. I'm going to tweak in this. Um, and then we can drop that down. So we've got this like A and B response. I'd probably make another bass to, to do that, but um, I don't want to spend too long uh, on this. I've, I'm mindful of your time. And I've got my own stuff to do as well. So let's do sub bass, and we're going to have a separate sub bass channel now. And this is important because it just gives us more control. So this bass, our main bass, we can take out the low end because our low end is now going to be handled by our dedicated sub. So for the dedicated sub, what I'm going to do is just... Um, I can open up a fresh serum, doesn't matter which synth you use, really. It just, as long as you've got a nice, clean, usually sine wave, but maybe a uh, triangle wave would be good as well. And now let's listen to that. Let's drop it down. Nice and low. We might have one octave down there, because that's really low. That's like... Nice. Uh, and then we'll have one octave above it as well. And we don't want that clicking, which often happens with sub bass if it really has a sharp attack and immediate release. So we'll just roll off the high end, get rid of the click. And then this sub bass needs to be one octave up because then it goes below the power level. So that's another benefit of having sub bass separate from the main bass. You can make these small tweaks because when this sub bass was one octave below, like in this line, we were losing all of the frequencies. It was too low for us to hear. So that's why we put them both on the same octave. Now let's take out the low end from our main bass so it doesn't clash with the sub. Okay, I want a little bit of release on this bass, I think. More character. Okay, I'm going to add a couple of little shuffle snares in there because I just think we need a bit more groove to this beat. So I'm just going to test that this has actually been recording properly. Yep, all good. So let's get a couple of extra snares in there. I'm just going to go and listen out for a snare that's not too intrusive. I quite like that one. Let's use that one. And it's just going to be quiet. And all of the groove happens on the 16th. Same with the bass as well. So if we put a little couple of snares there. 
It's just going to give a little of extra bit of interest to our groove, but I don't want all of this reverb, so I'm going to take that out because it's baked into the sample. So it's going to be a shorter, sharper snare now, like so. A little bit brash still. Short and sharp. So we can hear them. It's a wrong sound. There's too much high end in there. So I quite like that. Yeah, that's better. Okay, cool. Next thing we are going to do is set up a room reverb channel to make these drums gel together a bit more. So I've got an auxiliary channel I set up here. I've just added a short reverb under half a second decay time, 100% wet. Just boosted up the volume a bit because the Ableton reverb tends to make things quite quiet. And then taking out everything under 120 hertz because we don't want reverb in the low end really, it's going to make a muddy mix. So now let's just start gelling these drums together by feeding in a little bit. And the way I set this up was in the routing and drum rack, and you can check out my drum rack video. It's very, very powerful. Some of the tips I've shared in it is popping up there right now, but watch this one first. Uh, so I've opened up this routing. We've got a return channel in there, create return chain, and then I've just chosen room reverb from our, from our global room reverb, and we can close that down now, and now we've got these send controls here. So I'll just feed it a little bit into some of the drums. And a little bit into our shaker as well. So this is off. Let's turn off the bass so you can hear the difference. This is with no room reverb. Uh, we could use a little bit on the kick actually. That might be a bit crazy. Crazy, crazy boy. A little bit dry. Just opens it up a bit. Okay, cool. Next thing we need to do is work out what chords we're going to hit. So this is the main kind of bass that's staying on the root note of the track, but let's work out some really cool chords. And the way we're going to do that is create our own pad. Again, I would recommend checking out some uh, preset packs, but I'm going to do this one from scratch just because I don't know why. <laughs> because I want to show you some sound design. Okay, so let's just create a pad sound. Attack, release. It's a bit of a harsh sound, I think, though. So maybe we want something a bit rounder sounding like that. So add some unison so it's nice and wide. Detune it. Uh, that will do for now. I might add a bit of a filter as well. Again, we're going to open up this. We'll, we'll use a different envelope. I want to make this a really nice sweepy sound. So what I'm going to do is add some bandpass filter to it to give us a nice sweep like that. But I'm not going to do it with an envelope. I'll do it with an LFO so it's kind of continually gyrating. Oh. And we'll just take it down in the rate. It's going to be quite a gentle effect. And let's add another oscillator there as well. That's sounding quite cool. So I think that will do for now for our pad. So let's work out what bass notes they're going to hit. F easiest thing to do is use the scale mode, 
We've got G-sharp minor, it's already written in. Then work out the bass notes of the chord progression. They need to be twice as long actually, otherwise it's not going to work. So let's make that pad sequence twice as long. And then working out the chords, once you're in scale mode, it's pretty easy. We can just skip a note each time. So skip one note, skip another. You need to be in scale mode to do this, of course. I like it holding there, actually. And then we can go up. And let's repeat it for lushness. Yes. Add some room reverb, some hall reverb. Same as room reverb, but on a different auxiliary channel. Now there is quite a resonant frequency in there, so I'm just going to take that out. So that would be our main pro chord progression, I think. We could add sevenths to that as well. Yes. Absolutely, yes. Yes, and a ninth. Let's add that ninth. Oh, that's an absolute progression. Let's add that one there for absolute feels. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we want to create like a an arpeggio in the style of Subfocus as well. I love his music, so good. So let's just create an arpeggio and we're going to slow down this tempo because it's going to be hard to do it otherwise. So let's take this down to 74. I know, really slow, right? We get the, uh, the old metronome on there. Metronome, a very small mythical creature that lives in the underground system of the Paris, of Paris. Um, that's where the name comes from, actually. Again, something else I discovered fairly recently. Uh, and we'll go legato, because we want these to kind of blend into each other in terms of pitch. We want it to go... And we want just a simple sound. I think I'm going to go for a square wave to give it like a, an old computery game feel. Okay, okay, now all I'm going to do is find the scale. Boom, we've already got it. Uh, let's take the portamento down a little bit. And I'm just running down, basically, in an arpeggio. Which, working out which notes in the scale I think sound best in this sequence.
Oh, maybe I'll go up there. Now I'll go down. So we're just going to repeat this one over and over and over. So where was that? And then I think that's it. Cool. And now when we speed it back up, 174 is going to be really fast. Like so. Oh, already. Yes. And we're just going to keep that hitting the same, the same notes. Yes. So now where we've got to, we're going to have some old school pianos and some breakbeats in the break as well. Uh, I'm showing you a lot today. You know, this is the thing I get excited towards the end. And if I was more excited at the beginning, then more people would probably be watching at this point. But if you are still watching at this point, do please let me know. Give me a hell yeah in the comments or an amen, brother, if you're feeling holy. And you can, you know, feel free to write, write something um amazing in the comments and i'd really appreciate it right let's get some breakbeat i'm going to use loop cloud again you can use my affiliate link for loop cloud below this if you want to help support the channel but if you don't want to do that that's absolutely fine uh it's but it's a good tool okay so what i'm going to do is look for a breakbeat i don't know if we can search for that breakbeat um, and it might be the wrong, wrong word to search for. Let's have a listen. We want like an, like an old school drum and bass drums. In fact, I might just do that then. I might just go, uh, drum and bass, uh, drum, and then see what comes up. Okay. I want like an old school. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, no, I just want bass. Just want bass. Oh, sorry. Just want drums. Mm. I'll turn that down. It's a bit loud. This one's a good one. I'll, I'll buy that just in case. Oh, jungle. Yes. Get that in your get that in down your neck, son. You know, there's no way to Well, there is a way to program in breakbeat sounding drums, but if it's actually a real drum kit that's been sampled, nothing quite like it like the Armen break, which I could use cuz Yeah, I like this one. I'm having that, but I'm going to take out the low end. This is going to be great for a break. Okay. So let's just uh, drag that in. You need to let me drag that in. Here we go. Let's turn it down. Yes, bruv. Yeah. I'm going to kind of screw this up a bit as well. See, I, I only want that pre-snare thing happening like once in each time it loops around. So now I'm going to go... Whoops. Taxi. So let, let's try that now. And I'm just going to kind of add my own little flourishes because I like, I like drums. What can I say? So I think I want a double drum there. And now we've got our break beat. Boom. Lovely job. Okay. Now I want some old school piano in there. I know old school piano, but that's the vibe I'm going for. And then we're going to add it all together and then see what we got. Like bits of this, bits of that. Let's get the piano. Okay, natural color of piano, as we already know. We may not already know this, but it's good to know. It's, it's blue. And there's nothing quite like 
the M1 p plugin from Korg to really get that M1 piano sound. So if you do make piano house or you want that old school rave classic dance music piano sound, it's worth just spending the money to get this plugin. I don't know how much it is. It's like $99 or something. But if you use it a lot, it's worth it. So uh, let's see, what was I doing? Program, piano, piano 16. So you can hear the, um, that classic piano rave sound. So all we need to do now is use these same chords. You know, once you've got the, the bass notes and the chords down, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. So I, I'm actually just going to copy that up there, although I don't need to, um, but I'm going to copy it up there and just, just use these as a template. Oh, it looks like all the uh, velocities are a bit low, so I'll take them back up to 100 or 120. And again, you if you wanted to, you could slow the tempo down to make this easier, but I'm not going to. Because I want to, I know what I need to do. Yeah, yes. Oh man, I love dance music. Sometimes I wake up and I think, this is the best job in the world. And sometimes I don't, and then I start, and then after about half an hour like this, I'm like, this is the best job in the world. And I'm going to use the exact same pattern here, because we want to, you know, we don't want to confuse people. We need to make things relatively... Um, relatively repetitive, you know, because we're trying to make people dance. We're not trying to blow their minds with stuff that confuses them. That sounds nice. That's a nice chord, but not right for this song. Okay. Okay, all I'm going to do is, I think it's the same notes, isn't it? So let's just copy those over. Except the second time we're hitting this note instead, because we wanted to. And then these ones are the same. So let's just copy those over. And then, yeah, and then we've just hit one different note there as well. Let's just copy that pattern. And then we should be good to go. So let's get a bit of a filter on there. I'm just adding a couple of flourishes because I'm, I'm, I'm getting the feels. So, so nice, so nice. Now I want to do one little flourish here. I'm going to do reverse piano. I really hope some people are still watching at this point. This may be one of my longer ones. It may well be one of my longer ones. Okay, piano. I'm going to do a little reverse piano trick. I'm going to resample this. I just want to resample that one piano sound here. So let's just do that. That's the only one we need. So we don't need this stuff. We just need this. And now consolidate it, reverse it. And now we've got a very cool way to kind of loop around that riff. 
feeding into that first one again. Let's have a listen. So now we're doing this. Ooh, ooh, let's just tighten it up. Ah, oh, I, I need a little delay on this. I need just the, the merest hint of a delay. So what I'm gonna do is create a utility, uh, auxiliary channel. I'm gonna go Piano Dell. Let's add the specific reverb just for that. I'm gonna use the, you could use the standard delay, but I'll use the echo. I like the echo, 100% wet. And I think did, 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 did. maybe a dotted 16th is the, Let's let's see. No. Maybe no. Yes, this is happening. This is actually happening live and direct. Just just know it. Okay, there's only so much I can just in, indulge myself listening to that loop. Don't get stuck in the loop, guys. You know the score. Okay. <sighs> right, we need, to, we need to just make this into a track. We need to take up the low end of that delay. Let's brighten this piano a little bit. Bring in the bass. <sighs> okay, right for the um, for these pads and arps, we're going to take in a filter, so we can fade this in slowly. Let's call that low pass. Maybe this should be an octave down, actually. Oh my goodness. Right, let's um let's just feed this in. I'm going to do some arrangement now. Right, so let's, you know, if you get stuck in the loop, it can be a right pain. So, I'm just going to build this up and then make a drop. Now I'm feeling something that could really complement this would be an absolute face melting gnarly bass drop. Um but let's just stick to the plan. Let's open this up over time with the automation. Now this is an important part of the plan, is the arpeggi uh, arpeggio. We need to find a vocal for this bad boy. I, I'm not sure if we even need the, the delay. It might be a bit much. We only need it there actually. Yeah! This isn't the drop. I need some vocals. I need some vocals up in here. Right, we're going to use Loop Cloud again. That's fine. We know the track. We know the key. It is in G sharp, G sharp minor. So what we can go do is just hit G, whoops, G sharp minor. 
Now we need to look for some vocals. I need some female vocals, no doubt. Let's see what we've got. You know, I'm listening for the timbre as much as anything else and the vibe. I want an old school rave kind of vocal. So let's see. I, this isn't practice, it's not rehearsed, so let's just preview us. Okay. In fact, it doesn't matter which key I look for, as long as it's a minor, because I can hit pitch, and then I've got a bigger pool to choose from. That could be it. Calm down, love. A little bit too intense. It's gonna, everything's gonna hinge on finding the right vocal. That's cool. Okay, I'm having that. But what I'm gonna do is just pitch it up. I'm gonna pitch up this son of a pitch. So let's put it there. We need a vocal. So you have to be able to imagine how you can, you know, alter some sound if needs be. So, but it's got the right vibe for what I want. So let's drag that in. And we're gonna pitch this up like an octave. So we need to warp it correctly. Whoops, Complex Pro. Let's see what details we've got. It's in D minor. Um, so we need to change the pitch D minor. And I'm just counting on the keyboard. One, two, three, four, five, six semitones up. And now it should be in key. And it's 100 BPM, but that's fine. So we can, we can kind of slow it down if we want. But that's the kind of, that's the sound I want, like that high up rave vocal. Yeah, and now let's put a massive reverb on there. Uh, we'll do a dedicated one because it's the vocals. We have to we have to treat her well. We must treat her kindly. So let's give her the exact reverb and delay that she wants. Vocal delay. And let's pop on a delay and a reverb. An echo. Because we want to kind of extend this, this vocal out because it's pretty short anyway. Now let's sort the filters out within echo. Add a big fat reverb on there. I'm also going to compress it because you can see it's quite peaky. You know, it's there's a lot of dynamic variation. So let's just compress it a bit. Take out the low end because I think there's some low end information in there. That's better. Do -do 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 -do. Okay, and what we are going to do is now build up into the drop, and the drop is going to go like this.
Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. But now I want more of a drop like that. So maybe I need to start with a nice big bass sound. Yes, what I'm going to do is just do something, bit of a pitch bend. I don't need to pitch bend up actually, I just need to pitch bend down. And I'm just going to do a little pitch bend to add some interest right on the drop. So let's go MIDI channel pitch bend. We're going to pitch bend this down, son of a pitch. Oh, that sounds quite cool actually, I can repeat that for the second part but switch things round. So the first one hits down low and then it goes to the high bit. The second one pitches the high bit then goes down to the low bit. Yeah. And then we're going to have a re-space Oh, I can't keep doing this. I can't keep producing because I have to do other stuff today as well. Okay, let's just do a respace. Right. Because um, I want this to go now into like the main section where everything's playing, but on the drop. So we're going to get the vocal over there. Probably have it with the pad because the pad's just lush. Let's take, whoops, have we already taken out the low end? Okay, this is what's going to happen. We're going to switch, we're going to take that sub out and we're going to switch it to our Reese, which is going to follow the chord bass notes. So let's just copy those over. Like so, boom, boom, boom. And let's paste them in there. Is that too high? Oh, yes. Right. Last thing I'm going to do is add a synth riff. This might be too much, but I'm going to do it anyway. And then I have to stop. So it's going to be a fairly simple sound. And it's all going to be because of the um, distortion and the reverb that's going to add the character. <laughs> So let's add some distortion. Pre like pretty close already. Add some unison. Mm, I like how punchy it sounds without the unison, so I'm going to take that back down. And it's, instead, I'm going to add some of this hyper dimension. And now we're going to add a, I think, uh, I really like the amp, so let's add the amp really add some interesting grit to this.
Like, that's already cool. Let's add some reverb. That's a properly nice lead. So let's just jam some, some in. And I'm going to get... Let's just put that... Um, what's it called? Compressor, the sidechain compressor on the place it needs to on the places it needs to be, like the bass. And you can dial it back a bit if you want. And so the kick can punch through more. It's gonna be very important with the sub bass. Maybe a little bit on the piano. Taxi, taxi, that's why you should never play the wrong notes on the keyboard. But I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you found it useful and insightful. And I want to thank you very much for watching. You can download this project file, all the samples completely free as usual. And if you want coaching with me each and every week to get your music to a professional level as quickly as possible, you can check out the Accelerator program below this video. Thank you so much for watching. You can check out that other drum and bass video if you enjoyed this one. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers and happy producing.